Hi guys! For today's vlog, I'm going to talk about aphakia. So we're going to talk about the definition, causes, and signs and symptoms, and the treatment of aphakia. What is aphakia? Aphakia, it is an eye condition that involves not having an eye lens or absence of the crystalline lens of the eye. The lens is a transparent structure in the eye that is suspended immediately behind the iris that brings rays of light to a focus on the retina. Here we have the causes of aphakia. We have number one, removal of lens. This is by surgery and it is the most common cause. Number two, we have absorption of lens matter. This is by the trauma or the perforating injury causes rupture of the anterior capsule with subsequent absorption of the lens matter. Number three, we have hypermature cataract. This is very rare. All the lens matter is absorbed and the capsule is left behind. And for the symptoms of aphakia, we have number one, blurring of vision. Number two, trouble focusing on objects. And number three, we have changes in color vision that it appears faded. For clinical signs, we have one, the pupil is jet black color. Two, the anterior chamber is deep. And three, we have aerodontosis, which is vibration or agitated motion of the iris with eye movement. Four, we have limbus shows linear scars and sutures mark. And five, we have a high hypermetropia when we do retinoscopy. For the treatment of aphakia, we can have optical correction to correct refractive error and we can use convex lenses which is used by hypermetropic patients. Also, we can use spectacles, contact lenses, and the ocular implants and refractive corneal surgery. And I will talk about the advantages and disadvantages of this treatment. For the spectacles, we have a standard aphakic glasses of plus 10 diopters, but the exact power is determined by doing retinoscopy. The advantages are safe, easy, and inexpensive method of correcting aphakia. But the disadvantage is that the image magnification of 30% cannot be used to correct unilateral aphakia as it will result in diplopia or the doubling of vision. For contact lenses, we have here the advantages and disadvantages. The number one advantage is that it is less image magnification. Two, it eliminates aberration and prismatic effects of thick glasses. Three, it provides a better field of vision. Four, it is suitable for unilateral aphakia. And the disadvantages are one, it is expensive. Two, there is difficulty in handling, especially in children and elderly people. Three, it is associated with corneal complications since the contact lenses is embedded with the cornea. For intraocular implants, the intraocular lens is planted in the eye. It is the best available method for correcting aphakia. The only disadvantage of this one is that obviously it is expensive. For refractive surgery, there are even some corneal surgeries for aphakia, which are as follows. Keratophakia, 
apikeratophagia, and also hyperopic LASIK. So that's it for the topic of aphakia and fair will talk about subluxation of the lens. So keep watching! Subluxation of the lens in Marfan syndrome. What is subluxation of the lens? It is also called as ectopia lentis. Ectopia lentis is when the lens is displaced from its normal position centered behind the iris. What causes subluxation of the lens? First, trauma. Exploitation syndrome, ciliary block, Will Marchisani syndrome, and the Marfan syndrome. So the most common is the trauma, but this time I'm gonna talk about the Marfan syndrome. We have to know first the Marfan syndrome. What is Marfan syndrome? It is a genetic disorder that affects the body's connective tissue. As we all know, connective tissue maintains the form of the body and its organs and provides cohesion and internal support. The connective tissue includes several types, which is bones, ligaments, tendons, cartilage, and adipose fat tissue. What causes Marfan syndrome? Marfan syndrome is caused by a defect in the gene called fibrillin. 1 or FBN1. Fibrillin is a glycoprotein which is essential or very important for the formation of elastic fibers found in the connective tissue. There are a lot of clinical manifestations of Marfan syndrome. It includes physical appearance, dental problems, blood vessel changes, heart valve problems, cardiomyopathy, aortic root dilation, arrhythmia, lung changes, skin changes, and the last one is eye problems, which is one of it is the ectopic lentis. So what are the signs and symptoms of ectopic lentis? First, progressively myopic or nearsightedness, larger astigmatism, decreased visual acuity, diplopia, and amblyopia. And those signs and symptoms are associated with amblyopia, glaucoma, cataract, or retinal detachment. So as we can see in the picture, it is very clear that the lens is dissociated. That would result those signs and symptoms. Ectopia lentis also can be inherited as an isolated condition, then it is usually autosomal dominant. Autosomal dominant is a pattern of inheritance in which an affected individual has one copy of a mutant gene and one normal gene on a pair of autosomal chromosomes. For example, if one of your parent has subluxation of the lens, there is a huge possibility that you can have it also. How can we manage subluxation of the lens? Patients with subluxated lenses are treated with glasses or contact lenses if it is possible. If the visual acuity cannot be improved with these options, Surgery may be necessary to optimize vision. Lens extraction with or without placement of an intraocular lens can be the management also.